If you are a homeschooling mom with young kids or about to start this process and you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed trying to figure out how to make it all work while you have little kids at home, today we're gonna chat about some of my sanity saving tips for homeschooling with young kids. Hi, my name is Erin. I'm a homeschooling mom to four kids, ages six to 14. We've homeschooled from the very beginning, so I have a little bit of experience raising up my four kids through the little years and into early elementary. And today I wanna just sit down with you and have a little heart to heart. These are the tips that I would share with you if we were to sit down and have a chat face to face. So let's jump in. My first sanity saving tip, if you have young kids that you are homeschooling, is to keep it simple. This is one of the best pieces of advice that I ignored completely when I first started homeschooling. I know when we start out, we are excited, we wanna jump in, we wanna do all of the things. And then we also have that pressure on us to feel like we need to keep up with everybody else, especially in the early years, we need to keep it simple. We need to focus on the basics like math and learning how to read and just very simple things like that. The rest of the things will fall into place naturally as you get into a groove and figure things out and they get a little bit older and more mature and ready to take on more. Now that I have a few years under my belt, this is the piece of advice that I wish I would have taken when I first started out my homeschooling journey. My second point is very similar and that is to keep lessons short. Our kids have a very, very short attention span. I have heard that it is however many years a child is, that's the amount of minutes that they can keep their full, full focused, undivided attention, maybe give or take a couple of minutes. So. For instance, if your child is six years old, they have the potential to give you about six to eight minutes of undivided attention where they can actually be focused on what they're working on. And if we're trying to make our sit kids sit still for 30, 45 minutes at a time in any given lesson about something, they're not gonna absorb it. They're gonna lose attention. They're gonna get frustrated and overwhelmed. And we don't want that to happen either, right? So it's very important to learn to keep our lessons short and to also along with that, take lots of breaks. It's best to have a short focused attention and take lots of breaks throughout the day then try to cram everything in all at once. My third tip is to make learning fun. Find ways that are active and engaging for your children. In the early developmental years, our kids really learn through play. They learn through moving, through feeling, touching, tasting, um, experiencing the world with their hands and their full bodies. And they need that chance to move and be kids. And one of the beautiful things about homeschooling is that we have the chance to preserve their childhood in that sense. We don't have to force them to do too much schooling when they're little. When we have them home with us, we can keep our lessons focused on the most important things, keep them short and simple, and make them fun and engaging for our kids. When their lessons are fun and exciting and interesting to them, they're going to develop that love of learning that's going to carry them on throughout the whole rest of their life. And that is what we want to do as homeschoolers. My next tip is to focus on relationships over the lesson plans. And this is so important, especially in the year, early years, because we really want our children to know that they are the most important thing to us, their heart, not just what's up in here. And when we are in a lesson and maybe you feel a meltdown coming on or they're getting frustrated or you're getting frustrated as the mom because things aren't clicking as we want them to, it is so important to then stop and take a break, get to the heart of the issue and try to understand where your child is coming from. Maybe they're feeling frustrated because they're not understanding how things are being explained or it's too difficult for them or maybe they're just really not interested in it yet because they're not developmentally ready for it. And so again, don't push things too early, too soon is so important. Focus on their heart and what they really need at their core. It's important for our kids to know that we are their biggest cheerleader. We are not their taskmaster. And so if we can put aside the lesson plans, if our kids are having a really hard day and just get to the heart of the issue, spend some time building up your child and encouraging them, 
work on that relationship time. And that is gonna go so much farther than pushing through and working just to get that checkbox checked off. And our kids really at their heart level, they need to know that we love them, we cherish them, we value them as a person, no matter what their test scores are or their IQ is or what they end up doing as a career later on, the relationships are what really matter. Okay, so practically speaking, I also have a few tips to help you kind of navigate the waters of homeschooling while you have younger kids, especially if you're homeschooling older kids, but you also have younger kids or preschoolers or toddlers in the home as well. One of the best things that we did when my kids were younger is to do a lot of our lessons family style. So rather than each of my kids doing history and science and geography and all these different subjects individually on their own level using different curriculums and all of those kind of things. We did unit studies that were based on a certain time period or a science subject or whatever that we sat down and we did all together as a family. And that number one saved a ton of time because I didn't have to teach multiple kids on a different schedule. We were able to do it all together, but it was also super fun because we were able to learn and grow together. We were able to experience the same things together and have discussions about what we were learning. And that was such a fun and valuable component to especially our early years of homeschooling. Now that our kids are getting a little bit older, I am starting to incorporate a whole lot more independent learning. And that is another tip for you. If you can find curriculum or facilitate your kids' education in a way where they can do, especially the older kids, do a lot of their lessons on their own, that is gonna be a huge sanity saver for you. I know there's a lot of curriculum out there that is very, very teacher intensive. And while those curriculum options are amazing and and do give your children a excellent education. There are also a lot of curriculum options out there that can be very independent led, that are very open and go perhaps, or involve a lot more individual reading on your child's part once they're able to read. That I have found, at least for my family, has been a huge sanity saver for us because I'm not having to prepare all of these different lesson plans and teach all of these different lessons to all of my kids. So independent learning is, in my mind, especially as they get older, definitely the way to go. If you are homeschooling and you have a baby or a toddler in the house, one of my biggest sanity saving tip is to truly utilize nap time or quiet time during the day. When I was homeschooling and still had toddlers and babies in the house, pretty much the only way we ever got anything done was to really make a focused effort to get all of our lessons done as much as possible during that nap time. At least the lessons where I had to be more individually involved with my kids. Once my kids started growing out of that nap time, which I had two or three of them stopped napping at age two. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> and he, at that point, I started incorporating a daily quiet time where they would go to their room or to a different room and have some toys to play with quietly. I would try to do that for about an hour a day so that we could at least work with my older kids on their individual lessons during that time period. And I recognize some of you are probably like, how in the world does that work? I cannot keep my kid to stay quiet. <laughs> Part of what goes along with this is the next tip is to make sure you are spending a good amount of time on child training. There's a quote from Charlotte Mason that I love about this. She said that the mother who takes pains to endow her children with good habits secures for herself smooth and easy days. And the word pains is so true because disciplining and establishing good habits for our children is not easy work, <laughs> let's face it. But when we take that time to build those boundaries, that discipline, those good habits and routines, that is definitely 100% gonna help us to establish a more smooth and easy homeschool. It is a whole lot harder to change course once you've kind of allowed them to establish these patterns of bad habits of interrupting and all of those kind of things. So take some time now to work on that child training and discipline. Another practical tip is to do some of your group lessons or read aloud time during a snack time or a meal time because then your younger children especially are gonna be busy stuffing their face. <laughs> 
and their mouths are gonna be busy working food rather than talking. For a lot of years, our favorite time during our homeschool day was snack time because during snack time, our kids would have snacks, number one. <laughs> but number two, that's when I spent a lot of time doing our read alouds or family style lessons because our kids were entertained with the snacks in front of them. We would also get out coloring books or other quiet activities for our younger kids, especially to work on while we are reading and discussing our lessons. So if you can work some of your lessons around a snack or a meal time, that is one more tip that is gonna help save your sanity. Another tip for navigating these years with little kids at home is to make sure that you have community and or, or support system. When we are homeschooling, especially with little ones, we are at home a lot of times. Our schedule is woven around our child's nap times and all of those things. We end up being at home and we feel cooped up a lot of the times. And so it's so important for us to find community. When you have other homeschool moms that are in a similar stage or season of life that you're in, you can work together to collaborate, to share ideas, to give each other inspiration and encouragement when you're feeling frustrated or overwhelmed. It's so much easier to live this life if you have a support system than trying to do it all on your own. I know it's not always easy to put yourself out there, especially if you're an introvert, but I tell you, it is so worth it. That is gonna go so far in helping you to feel uplifted and encouraged and help you moving along on this path of homeschooling. And the next thing to do is to give grace, not only to your children, but also to yourself. Homeschooling is hard. Things do not always go as planned. In all actuality, they're more likely to not go as planned than they actually do as planned, especially in the little years. It is so important to give yourself some grace, to not put so much pressure on yourself to perform perfectly, to do all of the things, to check all of the boxes, to measure up to your in-laws' expectations and all of those things. That is gonna do so much for helping you to save your sanity as you homeschool your kids. And remember, when you don't feel like you are measuring up and you don't feel like you have enough, remember the words that Jesus says to you. He says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. And the reality is we were never meant to be perfect. We never can. We cannot measure up to these impossible expectations, but through the power of the Holy Spirit living inside you, God's power is sufficient to give you grace for each day. So take one day at a time, be encouraged, you can do this. If you're in the position where you still have toddlers and babies at home and you need some more practical tips to help you make it through the homeschool day, make sure you check out this video right here. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button below and share this with anyone else that you think might find it helpful. And I'll see you next time, bye.